Recently, one of my clients reached out with a serious issue in their N810 AI workflow. It looked something like this. It might look impressive, but it was far from effective. Just look at the number of tools that were attached to this single AI agent. They faced issues like AI hallucination, poor response quality, and a lack of control when building complex workflows. In this video, I'll show you how to fix all of these problems step by step. For obvious reasons, I'm not showing you the exact workflow, but it was something like this. Before we dive into fixing the workflow, let's talk about why relying on a single agent is not a good idea. A single agent trying to do everything, research, task creation, notifications, scheduling, gets overloaded. This results in slower response times, hallucinations, and poor quality outputs. In contrast, a multi-agent system distributes the responsibilities among specialized agents. Each agent is designed for a specific task, improving both accuracy and performance. In fact, studies show that multi-agent systems can improve task accuracy by up to 40% and reduce errors by over 30% compared to single-agent setups. Imagine a business that wants to streamline its client onboarding process. An employee fills out a form when a new client signs up. This triggers an any workflow. The workflow includes a master AI agent that acts like a router, delegating tasks to other specialized AI agents. The master AI agent will communicate with four other specialized AI agents, each with a specific role. First, research. For example, if they have opted for SEO, we want to do a complete research of their existing keywords and the new keywords that we need to add on their website. Next, we want our workflow to use that research data and create real tasks in Airtable. After that, we want the workflow to create a meeting in Google Calendar. And finally, we want the workflow to send an email to the client and to our team with all the research information, all the tasks and the meeting invites. Let's jump on to Aniton and fix all the problems with this workflow. The first issue with this complex workflow is the overloaded single agent. Right now, the workflow has one AI node trying to do everything. So what's the solution? We'll create five different agents. Here, I've removed all the other nodes and just kept the first agent. Let's rename it to Master Router Agent. Now let's create our other agents. Let's rename it to Email Agent. Then create another agent and rename it to Research Agent. Then another agent. Rename it to Task Manager Agent. And finally, let's create one more and rename it to Calendar Agent. Now we need to connect all of these AI agents to this Master Router Agent. Now to be able to do that, we need to move each of these agents in their respective separate workflows. And then in the tool, select Call Any Ten Workflow Tool. And then from the drop down, we can select the workflow that we want to trigger as a tool from this master router agent. For now, I'll just keep these agents over here to explain everything. And at the end, I'll move them to their respective workflows. Let's rename this workflow tool to the respective agent names. Rename this one to email tool. Let's add another tool and rename it to research tool. Add another one for task manager agent. Let's rename it to task manager tool and one more for calendar agent. Let's rename it to calendar tool. Now this simplifies our initial workflow a lot. Now let's address the next problem using the wrong agent types. Not all agents are the same and choosing the right one for the task can make a huge difference. For example, tools agent is best for tasks that require interacting with external systems like Google Calendar or Airtable and so on. Whereas React agents are best for reasoning and decision-making tasks that involve dynamic inputs like analyzing business data. The initial workflow just had one tools agent that was taking care of everything. Now here's how we can assign the agent types. For email agent, calendar agent, and task manager agent, we can use tools agent, but for research agent, we can use React agent because it needs to analyze data and generate insights. If there were an agent for interacting with SQL database, you could have used SQL agent. I'll create another detailed video explaining when to use which agent. The third issue is poorly written prompts. Without clear instructions, agents produce inconsistent or irrelevant outputs. 
To fix this, I'm going to share a universal prompt template that works for any agent. And this is how it looks like. First, we have role, where we define the agent's specific role. Then we define the scope and specify the type of input it will handle. Next, we have command section, where we explain how it should use various tools or APIs. Then we have format section, where we define the tone or the format of the output it needs to produce. And finally, we have constraints section, where we mention what the agent should avoid doing. And this is how the prompt looks like for router agent. First, we define the role, saying you are a master router agent responsible for orchestrating a workflow by delegating tasks to specialized agents in the correct order. Then we define the scope. Then we define a detailed command on what it needs to do and how to do it. I've broken down into multiple steps. In step one, it says begin by delegating the research task to the research agent, provide the agent with the required data, and collect the structured report it generates. This is how the input to the research agent should look like. And then in step two, we tell it to pass the research report to the task manager agent to create actionable tasks. And this is how the input to task manager agent would look like. Then we ask it to use the calendar agent to schedule an onboarding call and define the input expected by the calendar agent. Similarly, we ask it to send an email using the email agent along with the expected input. In the format, we ask it to make sure all the inputs and outputs are structured as JSON. In the constraints, we ask it to not to attempt to perform any task directly and it should delegate them to the sub-agents. Now this agent knows exactly what it needs to do, how to do it, and in what order. We can define the prompts for all of these agents using the same template. I'll quickly complete all of these agents. So this will be our Google Calendar agent. Of course, we can add additional tools to first check the availability and to book the appointment and so on. This will be our task manager agent having access to Airtable and to other tools that are required to create the tasks. This is our research agent having access to web search via SERP API. And this is our email agent having access to Gmail to send the message. Now, these are simplified agents for the purpose of this example, but we can always add more tools and make them more powerful. Now we can move all of these agents in their respective separate workflows. We can copy it from here, delete it, create a new workflow and paste it here. Let's add the trigger as when called by another workflow. Let's save it as calendar agent. Go back to previous workflow. Now let's open calendar tool. And here we can see the new workflow that we added for calendar agent. And then in the inputs, we can add all the inputs that this workflow expects. And the router agent will fill in all of those while calling the tool. Similarly, we can move all of these tools to their respective workflows and connect them here. Now the last issue is unstructured outputs. The plain text responses are messy and often require additional processing. So instead of using one more OpenAI node over here and asking it to convert the response into a JSON, the better way of doing it is in the tools agent, we can enable this required specific output format. And once we do that, we'll start seeing this output parser option over here. We can click here and select the output parser that we want to use. Let's use structured output parser. And here we can define the JSON that this router agent should return. Now remember that this is not the JSON to be followed for intermediate results or while passing the inputs to various sub-agents. Instead, this is the final response that is returned by the router agent. And once this is done, we can execute the next set of nodes relying on this JSON output, such as sending a message to Slack. And here we can directly use the field from the return JSON. Now this is how the equivalent workflow looks like after all the changes. Now it's really easy to manage, make changes to it, and at the same time, all the other workflows that we have created, they are reusable. If you want to learn about all the AI nodes in Anyton, don't forget to check out this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Future Minds, and let me know in the comments how you are using Anyton and AI in your projects.